Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and before we get into this episode, I wanted to remind you to check out our other Western podcasts released daily by going to otrwesterns.com or searching OTR Westerns in your podcast app of choice. I also wanted to invite you to check out our other podcast channel releasing non-Western shows by going to otnetcast.com or by searching otnetcast in your podcast app of choice. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be the Lone Ranger. Original air date is September 24th, 1945, and the title is The Gentleman from Julesburg. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy. Indian companion Tonto, the mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Some of the folks around Swiftwater called the old man Jules, and there were some who addressed him ironically as the gentleman from Julesburg. He slept at the livery stable where he worked part-time. Most of his money went to buy feed for his horse Apache. The old Jules looked thin, ragged, and half-starved. The black mare always glistened, sleek, and well-fed. A dozen men had tried to buy the mare. Old Jules watched from expressionless eyes as Pete Stacy, the gambler, reined up his big bay horse before the stables. Ho, ho, fellow, ho, ho, steady. Well, howdy, Jules. Soaking up some sunshine, huh? Mm-hmm. Say, uh, you still got that black mare, Jules? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well... Three-year-old, ain't she? Four. Mm, yeah, that's right. I remember now, you got that coat from Sid Bannerman at the B-44. Raised her up yourself. Uh-huh, that was when you first came to Swiftwater. Yeah. Say, Jules, you ever think of selling that mare? No. Give me $400, Jules. Spot cash. Ain't interested. Or would you take 500 Mare ain't for sale, Pete. Well, <clears throat> got to get over to the bank before she closes. Oh, uh, say, did you hear the news about Billy Clark? Bill, Billy, uh, 
What about him? Oh, he's getting hitched up, that's what. Him and Kitty Martin. Pretty slick, huh? Marrying the sheriff's daughter. Hey, uh, what would you take for that mare? Uh, when they getting married? No, a week Sunday. Young Clark's buying the Crescent outfit, I guess. That is, if he can whack up enough money to satisfy the bank. Say, why don't you sell me that horse, Jules? I'll give you... Now, get this. A thousand dollars right smack on the barrel head. A thousand? My man, just think what you could do with that money. No more of this sleeping in a barn. Eat a meal, skip two. Why, you could really do something with a thousand dollars. Well, what do you say? You, uh, Let me think it over, Pete. Sure. Sure. <laughs> you just sit there and think what you could do with a thousand dollars. I'll see you later. For a long time, the old man sat staring into the fading sunlight. Hello, Julesburg. Hmm? Why, Kitty, how are you? Fine, thank you. Hey, tell me you're fixing to start wearing double harness. Uh Uh-huh. I reckon I'm glad for you, Kitty, like everyone else. You're getting a fine man. And I reckon Billy Clark's getting a fine young woman. Thank you. Do you know about us buying the Crescent? Yeah. I heard Billy was having a time getting the price together, though. He's getting it today from the bank in Bristol. Well, that's good news. He should be back soon. Mm Mm-hmm. Wedding on Sunday? Uh Uh-huh. Just two more days. Will you be there? Me? Why, say, I don't see how... I mean... Please. Both want you to be there. You've been such a good friend to both of us, I... Well, I'm right proud to be invited. And if you think it's all right for an old man in rags to be there, then I'll be there. About ten miles west of Swiftwater, where the rolling foothills gradually merged into the Skeleton Mountains, the Lone Ranger and his young nephew, Dan Reed, were camped. The camp was scarcely a hundred yards from the Swiftwater Trail, but cleverly concealed from the view of anyone passing by. It was almost daylight. Do you think Tonto will be able to find this camp? Oh, I think so, Dan. See, Tonto and I camped here once before, a few years ago. Oh, well, I'd better get another pail of water from the spring and... Listen, someone's coming now and fast. Well, it isn't Tonto. We're expecting him to come from Swiftwater, and this rider is heading toward town. Come on, let's get over by the trail. Whoever he is, he's riding hard. Here, I'm up here behind these rocks. Be careful you're not seeing it. Sure. Golly, look at that horse run. Really fast, all right. Careful now. Yeah. That's strange. I wonder if... Huh? There's only one horse in this part of the country like that one. What? Now, come on, let's get back to camp. You spoke as though you knew that horse. I do, Dan. I remember that black mare. She's called Apache. I also remember the man who owned her. Golly, you knew him too? The fellow that was riding her? No, that's what has me puzzled. He was owned by an old man named, or rather nicknamed, Julesburg. Sometimes called the gentleman from Julesburg. Wasn't he riding her just now? No, Julesburg is a small man. It's a funny nickname. Supposed to have come from Julesburg a few years ago and settled in Swiftwater. Julesburg... That's up in Colorado, isn't it? Yes. This old fellow barely makes a living by helping out at the stable in town. He raised that mare from a colt. I didn't think he'd sell her at any price. Golly, do you think someone stole her? It isn't likely he'd be riding toward town if that were the case. Oh, that's right, too. The gentleman from Julesburg. (laughs) That's a funny name for a man who hasn't got a cent to his name. Someone with a mistaken sense of humor pinned that on him. They learned he was from Julesburg. You see, one of the most famous characters along the early frontier was known by that name. Yeah? He was a gambler who traveled all over the Southwest. Wealthy, expensive dresser. He was said to wear a diamond ring worth more than $50,000. Golly, no wonder they called him the gentleman from Julesburg. Did you know him? No, Dan, but I've heard many stories about him. Here comes Toto. Hey! 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 How, Dan? Hi, Tonto. Did you meet a rider on the trail, Tonto? Ah. Me see fellow ride black mare, Apache. Plenty fast. Found to get off trail, let him go by. Good. 
Oh, uh, did you help the sheriff get those prisoners to the county seat? Ah, Sheriff Holler, plenty glad you helped him catch crooks. Him say be glad to see you again. We may come through this country again someday. Any other news from town? Ah, uh, a young feller, Billy Clark, him get money to my girl, buy ranch. Him drink too much last night, lose money. Sheriff say, maybe him get robbed. He doesn't know what happened? Him not know. Golly, I'll bet he's sorry. No doubt. Well, let's get our gear packed. A long journey ahead. Our work here is finished. Meanwhile, in the town of Swiftwater... Billy, you ought to be pistol-whipped. Your own life is yours, and I reckon you can throw it away if you like. But you've got that girl of mine so worked up, she ain't done nothing but ball ever since you showed up here this morning, smelling of cheap liquor and saying you lost your money. I'm trying to explain. Explain? Don't you never let me see you get within explaining distance of her again, if you know what's good for you. Oh, now take it easy, Sheriff. Give the kid a chance to think what happened. I, I can't remember. I know I had a couple of drinks with the fellas. A couple? A couple of dozen, you mean? Oh, no, no, I didn't drink much. I remember starting for home because I had all that money with me. I didn't get back here in time to put it in the bank, so... So you go out on a binge with $12,000 in your pocket. Oh, what's the use? Even if I could remember what happened, none of you would believe me. Sheriff Martin, I just come from the restaurant. Yeah? He's down there right now, eating his head off. And I seen him pay the Chinaman what he owed him. Who's down there? Who is it you've seen, been seeing? Why, why, old Julesburg, of course. Well, what of it? What do I care about that? I was just fixing to tell you, Sheriff. He's packing a roll of money big enough to choke a cow. Uh, Julesburg? That's who I said, ain't it? Well, Where'd he get it? Thanks for letting me know. Come on, you fellas. Let's take a walk down to the yeah. chase. Yeah. <laughs> Howdy, Jules. Oh. Howdy, Sheriff. That's a right smart looking steak you're chewing. Uh huh. Looks like one of the Chink's $2 specials. Mm, it, it is. I'd tell you it was in the chips, Jules. How come? That's supposed to be some of your business? I'm making it my business. Where'd you get that roll you're packing? Mm. Ask Pete Stacy. He can tell you. Hey, what do you mean, I can tell him? Well, can't you? No, I can't. But I got a smart idea. Trying to borrow five bucks from me last night and today you're flush. Hey, wait a minute. You're saying I tried to borrow money from you? You heard me. You're a liar by the clock. I never tried to borrow nothing from no man in this town. Never mind all the palaver. You've got a bankroll, I hear. Now I want to hear where you got it. I got it from Pete Stacy, Sheriff. You give me $1,000 for the mayor. What? Why, you two-faced old hypocrite, I ought to... Hold on, hold on. You say Pete give you 1000 for Apache? Uh-huh. And he took her? Come and got her last night. Well, go search my place. Go on. See if you can find this black mare. Jules. Um, you hear what happened last night? I can't say as I did. What? Come on. We better settle this horse business first. Sure. Go on out and search my place. Shut up, Pete. I'm aiming to. But it's closer to the livery. I want to take a look over there first. Come on, Jules. Sure. Let's go. Well, you've been back in that stable enough time, Sheriff. Reckon you know where I keep Apache. Go in and take a look. Sure. Then we'll catch you some horses and ride over to Stacy's place. Something mighty fishy about this. One claiming he sold a horse and the other one denying he bought it. And... Hey, one of you fellas throw a gun on old Junesburg there. Pronto. Hey, All what's right, the Sheriff. Place? I got him covered. Why? What'd you find? I'll show you. On Apache. Apache! What in the name of... Looks like this horse has been rode plenty hard. Like she might have run all the way from the skeletons where Billy Clark had some uh, bad luck last night. Oh, the, oh. Sheriff, Whoa. you don't mean... Uh, what bad luck? What happened to Billy? As if you didn't know, huh? Well, he was packing 12000 in cash when he left town. He woke up along the trail, 
Long towards daylight with nothing but a big headache. And you come along with a story about selling this mare for a thousand dollars. Let me look at that horse, Sheriff. Oh, girl, easy now, easy. Yeah, whoever rode her back here was sure cutting the breeze. And... Whoa, Patsy, whoa, blast your hide. Stand still or I'll... Hey, what the hell are you doing? Look out! Get going, girl! Yahoo! Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Continue our story. The black mare, carrying the slight weight of old man's jewels, thundered out of swift water and headed for the distant hills of the skeleton range. Show him your heels, girl. Show him how to run away from a, a frame up. Show him how. Yo, yo, yo! Wants to race, does he? All right, come on, girl, run. Run, Patchy. Run, blast your hide. Run, he's gaining on us. Keep going, old timer. There's a posse on your trail and they're coming up fast. Keep going, Patchy. Don't give up till we get to the hills. Then we can lose them. Follow me. Watch for the cutoff. Come on, Silver. In the Lone Ranger's hidden camp, Jules was surprised to learn that the masked man knew his horse, Apache, and had seen Pete Stacy riding him that very morning. Then Jules told about the robbery and how he'd been framed. This morning, Stacy denied everything, huh? You're the only man alive that saw Stacy riding that black mare. He sneaked her back into the stable, and you saw him go by here on his way to town. Yes, that's true. And I don't reckon your word would carry much weight with the law, if it come to proving anything. On the contrary, Sheriff Martin happens to be a good friend. Yeah. Seems to me the thing to be proved is that you didn't rob young Billy Clark. I can't prove that. Not just yet. But there's something I can prove. Oh? This Billy Clark. I was figuring to use that money I got for the mayor to sort of give him and the girl a wedding present. Made me kind of happy to know he was marrying such a fine girl. Happy to know he was getting started on a home of his own. Hasn't he had a home? Oh, his mother died when he was a youngster. His dad... Dad didn't amount to much. Disappeared when the kid was five years old. Leaving a little money with the boy's uncle to kind of see that the boy was provided for. I thought you were a newcomer in these parts, Jules. How does it happen you know all these things? Because I'm the fellow that didn't amount to much. The one that ran off and left him, see? Then... Sure. I'm Billy Clark's father. He's still wondering whether or not I committed that robbery? Otto, you and Dan had better unsaddle and unpack our gear. We'll be traveling south later. It was Saturday night, but there was little celebration in the town of Swiftwater. At the home of Sheriff Martin... Hey, now, the sooner you forget the whole thing, the better fellow to do a stupid thing like he done. Well, you ought to be glad you found it out before you married him. But he worked so hard. Saved every penny. Mm Mm-hmm. Then threw it away. Oh, Dad, I... Dad, if that's him, tell him I'm not at home. Don't worry. 
Uh, that's young Clark. I'll tell him plenty. Evening, Sheriff. What? Oh, why, it's the mass man. Say, I thought you'd hit the trail. Not yet. I wanted to talk to you. <laughs> Sheriff recognized the masked man as a friend and was soon persuaded to give some credit to the story Billy had told. And the Lone Ranger explained the relationship between Bill and Old Jules and told the sheriff who Old Jules really was. The lawman agreed to aid in a plan that might bring out the truth. He accompanied the Lone Ranger to the camp where Old Jules waited. I tell you, Julesburg, it's got to be done. Uh, not by me, Sheriff. You're the only one who can do it. I... Oh, just a minute, Julesburg. All evidence points to you as a thief. I know. There's only one way to pin the guilt where it belongs. Pete Stacy must be made to produce the stolen money. But I... I vowed I'd never gamble again as long as I lived. I found that kind of money didn't buy happiness. You think your son will be happy if the cash isn't found? Mm, no. Or the girl he loves? Jules, you have a rare skill. You use that skill to hurt people. Here's your chance to use it to help people who mean much to you. But my... my vow... I swore I'd never gamble again. Gamble? Who said anything about gambling? Gambling involves luck and risk. Hmm? You're not going to gamble. You're going to expose a crook. This man wouldn't tell you to do it if it wasn't the right thing, Jules. Jules, you've got to play just one more game of cards. The most important game of your life. The stake in this game isn't money. It's justice. One more game. I wonder if I can do it. Well, howdy, Sheriff. Hello, Pete. I just telling these fellas how old Julesburg tried to claim I bought that mare of his. You know, it's a funny thing about old Jules. I still ain't found out for certain where he got all that money. But you know what I did find out? What? Why, that old rascal's been living here right under our noses for three or four years. And I just learned that his real name is Bill Clark. Been missing for most 20 years. Bill Clark? Why, sure. Young Bill Clark's father. Of course, that eliminates him as a robbery suspect. Paula wouldn't be likely to rob his own son when the kid's just fixing to get married. Well, well now I don't know. In fact, they're together right now, having a kind of a reunion. Old Jules prove he was Billy's dad? Oh, sure. Plenty of proof. Say, this place sure is dead tonight. How about a friendly game, yeah, huh? Yeah, sure, sure. sure. Come on, Sheriff. Just soon have your money as anybody else's. Well, you ain't going to get much because... Hey, here comes old Jules and Billy right now. Hey, Jules, you got plenty of wampum. Want to play cards? Well, uh, uh, what stakes you playing? Suit yourself, old timer. All right, I'll try her. That's the spirit. Get the cards, Pete. What's the matter, Pete? You running in bad luck? Can't beat the cards Jules has drawn. Talk about luck. Hey, Shorty. Bring me some money. Four aces, Pete. Good enough. Too good. Shorty, bring me some money. I'll call and raise you 500. Well, excuse me, boys. It's getting too rich for my blood. Better finish it out between the two of you. Well, I'll see that, Pete, and raise $1,000. I, I can only call. What you got? A gambler's prayer, Pete. Royal flush. Oh, well, I'll be teetotally... Shorty. Ain't nothing left in the cash box, Pete. Now, you wait a minute. I'll get some money from the safe. Some real money. Shorty, scrapper, Blackie, come on. Now, listen, that old tramp is into me for plenty. I can't do much with the sheriff standing right there. I don't get it back with this cash. You be ready for him when he leaves here. We'll take care of him. Shorty, maybe you better fix up a round of drinks for the table. You know what to do with the old man's drink. Sure. All right, you come with me. You two wait a minute and go out the other door. Come on, outside door. 
Hey, what the... Back inside, all of you. And don't try anything. The last man, get him! <laughs> Good work, Tonto. I'll slip out front and ask the sheriff if he wants to play bartender. I'll take care of these two crooks. Shorty, bring me a drink. Bring us all a drink. You stay here tell how the gentleman, uh, the real gentleman from Julesburg, got in a game one night and held two royal flushes, hand running. Here you are, mm-hmm. fellas. Drink on the house. Here, let me help you, Shorty. I'll get them. Here, uh, here you are, Jules. Oh, shucks, you got customers waiting at the bar. I'll pass them out. Here. Here you are, Jules. Drink hearty. Thanks. Pete, here's one for you. Here. Now, the rest of you fellas, help yourselves. Thanks. Well, last hand for me, Pete. Here's luck. Luck. Uh, can you open her? Can you open her? She's, she's open for us, house. Mm-hmm. Cool. Cards? Give me two. And one for the dealer. It's your bet. I bet. <clears throat> I bet a thousand dollars. Your thousand and five, Pete. Uh, you raised me five? Why, sure. Sure. I call. Another gambler's prayer, Pete. Royal flush. <laughs> you. You said. Gentlemen, Julesburg. He said the original gentleman from Julesburg could deal him two in a row, Pete. When you wake up, you're going to find you've been playing cards with that same original gentleman. Charty, don't you move a muscle, you rat-faced buzzard. Now, you fellas, step into that back room and drag out what you find tied up there. A couple of more varmints named Blackie and Scrapper. What's the name of it? What's it all about, Sheriff? These bills your dad's been winning from Pete Stacy are brand new bills. I was carrying brand new bills last night. I told you, Sheriff, I got the money from the Bristol Yet, Bank. You got the only brand new money they handed out. That's why your dad went after Stacy's cash. Made him dig it out until he got to what he took from you. Th- then I'll get my money back? Yep. Now you'd better run and tell Kitty the news. I'll take care of this sleeping beauty. <laughs> Pete ain't going to like it when he wakes up and learns that I got the drinks mixed up. Golly, Sheriff, I... Dad, I owe a lot to you. Give the credit where it's due, son. I'd be hiding in the hills right now if it hadn't been for the Lone Ranger.
you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.